What's up everyone? It's your boy NoranRad89 here bringing you another video today. And for today's video, I wanted to talk about the Nolan trilogy or Nolan era of the Dark Knight because we didn't really talk about that when I was doing my Batman content. And I recently just picked up this Blu-ray that has Batman Begins, Dark Knight, and Dark Knight Rises. I have a video on my channel where I go through the contents of this. But today I wanted to talk about just clearly the era of this uh, Dark Knight, Nolan, Blue, like said, Batman, what it meant to me, and all that kind of stuff in each film. So let's get into this video. And of course, we're going to be talking spoilers if you haven't seen these films. <laughs> but let's get into this video. So the Nolan era of the Dark Knight is definitely an influential era of the Dark Knight for real. This is the era that really laid the groundwork for a more realistic and grounded take on comic book hero movies and also just much more mature content. For comic book movies, you know, because a lot of comic book movies, you when you think about them, they gear them more towards kids. They make them more towards PG-13 and stuff like that. And yes, you can do PG-13 content. You can do even rated R content. Like, that's what I mean. These films are showing you that you can kind of push the envelope a little bit and people are ready for the more mature aspect. Because a lot of the people that were fans of comic books are all you know, in their late 30s, 40s, 50s, like that's the area, we're all grown up now, you know what I mean? That's what's happening. So they have to, They Nolan understood that when he started this Batman trilogy. And I think this is one of the greatest trilogies that has ever touched this planet Earth. And one major thing for me is when I think of a good trilogy, the first film is great. You love it. It introduces you to the world. The second film is even better. Builds on that. Adds more to that and aspect. And then the third film is the amazing conclusion that you wanted that just packs the punch that you're like, damn, I invested so many years. One, two, and then here waited for this third film and it came out. And like, that's what I experienced. Like, or I picture when I think of a great trilogy and that's what this trilogy is for me. Because for me, it's Batman Begins. I love that film. I adore that movie, but I like Dark Knight better than that. And I like Dark Knight Rises even better than that. And believe me, yes, I have gotten shit for The Dark Knight Rises being my top favorite one. But we will get into that as we talk about these films. Let's get into first just talking about Batman Begins and how epic it was to see this Batman origin story that is probably the greatest version or origin story that you're ever going to get for the Batman. People will tackle it eventually years and years and decades from now, but I think the Batman Begins will go down as probably the greatest of all time of origins for the Batman and seeing Christian Bale, Katie Holmes, you know, Michael Caine, Morgan Freeman, just all the actors in here, Rucker Howers in here, freaking Liam Neeson as Ra's al Ghul, I think is the great balance as the villain because he has that father figure aspect to him. But when it does the flip and you find out he's Ra's al Ghul and he's all villainous, you know, Liam Neeson can play that too. So I think it's great to see that. And you really see Christian Bale transform in this film because he's really young, immature, just wants vengeance. Just at the beginning of the movie, he's much more kind of similar to the Pattinson one, just at the beginning of the movie. And by the end, it's much more, I'm doing this for the city. I'm trying to sacrifice this and be a symbol for the city to make things better in Gotham. So as I said, I really do adore Batman Begins. This is definitely one of my favorite comic book movies of all time. But then we have to talk about one that I think is even better, The Dark Knight. And that's mainly because we get the Heath Ledger performance as the Joker. Yes, this isn't... Uh, if I was to say Batman film, Batman Begins is a better Batman film, but Dark Knight is a better movie. And it's really because Heath Ledger brings to life one of the greatest Joker performances, flat out villain performances that we've ever seen. You can hold it up there, right up there with Anthony Hopkins or Darth Vader, like that iconic, a villain that stretches the landscape and just like everybody from every facet of, you know, geeks to goths to, you know, nerds like everybody to you know the jocks everybody knows about this guy because of the performance that he put out and Heath Ledger just was a slam dunk but there are some other great aspects of this film like it looks so beautiful the score for this film is amazing and just so gorgeous and takes you through the movie add to that we have Aaron Eckhart as Two-Face who yes I did have to warm up to him but now I appreciate his performance so much it's just great I think Aaron Eckhart you couldn't really have asked for a better actor for that role and it's just oh man Dark Knight packed a punch and really did, like I said, change 
a lot of things because it was pulling from heat and a lot of those early 90s kind of, you know, crime thrillers. And it brought that to the Batman aspect and there was some actual detective nature in it. So this one was the first Batman franchise that kind of offered a little bit of everything. It had tech stuff going on. It had a more grounded real world Batman, but it also had the villains in it, the crazy characteristic villains. So I think this tr trilogy really does offer every Batman fan out there something to love. But then we get on to Dark Knight Rises, which is my favorite. And I know that I have gotten some shit for that film because, oh man, some people do talk about how that's Nolan's probably one of his worst scripts in the writing and stuff because he kind of cheated and had some kind of little cheat stuff going on that you really don't normally see in his scripts. But I freaking love this movie. I think the conclusion to this Dark Knight trilogy is fabulous. Tom Hardy's Bane packs a presence and every scene every dialogue he has is so powerful like even that scene where he's talking to dagger and he's like puts his hand on dagger's shoulder and he's like do you feel in charge like it, that you can feel tom hardy's present just oozing out of the screen add to that we have anne hathaway's Catwoman, who i think has some of the best chemistry with christian bale and her scenes her dialogue is so epic like if people really pay attention to the writing and the dialogue in this movie they they pay attention more to the story stuff and like the little cheat things and things that you don't know. But it's like, do you really have to know all those things? Pay attention to the dialogue. Pay attention to the vibe of the film. Because this movie has such a fucking vibe and such great dialogue. Spread across the board. That scene with Michael Caine and Christian Bale when he's talking Bruce Wayne and Alfred. is so emotionally and it's so impactful. Like, I still get tears a little bit when I watch that film. Or that scene. Because it's so emotionally powerful when he's talking about how he burned the letter and all that stuff from Rachel it's just it's the, like for real and this is the only Batman film Dark Knight Rises that I actually kind of feel the threat I've seen all the Batman films across the world and I've seen the new Batman film twice and yeah Dark Knight Rises I think is the only one still to this day that I feel the threat to Gotham I'm actually worried I'm scared for what's going on and Bane succeeds and it seems to be like if you haven't like, you know, I have my ranking for the Batman films. But yeah, my top ones are, you know, Dark Knight Rises and the Batman. And it seems to be very popular with me is films where Batman fails at the end and he kind of learns lessons because Bane kind of does succeed. I mean, Bane, but Batman does end up getting the win at the end end. But oh, man, like I said, it seems to be. Yeah, for me. Films where Batman ends up losing at some point are the ones that I love the most because it's so much more character building for Bruce Wayne and the Batman character. And that's what I love about it. And yeah, Dark Knight Rises did pack that emotional punch. I saw that three times in the theaters. Probably the only Batman film I'm going to see three times in the theaters like ever. And yeah, that's how much I love that film. But thanks for sticking around with me all as we talked about right here the nolan era all three of these films the batman films as i said i really didn't talk about these films when i did my batman content i was like i just picked this blu-ray up i was like why not let's talk about these movies thanks for sticking around with me all let me know in the comment section what you think of the nolan era is this your favorite era of the batman films or do you love a different era of the batman movies i would love to hear from all of you and don't forget to like and subscribe and have a safe and happy day everyone peace out